everybody. This is Diana from So Very Crafty, and we are here today to make this adorable little bunny basket, Easter basket, for this coming Easter. How cute is this? It's a little round basket with a handle and some cute little bunny ears that stick up so that your child can have a nice, fun Easter and can reuse this bunny basket year after year, any time of the year if they like bunnies. This is a cute little project to do. It is super simple. It is a beginner sewing project that anybody with basic sewing skills can make. It's a little fidgety on the bottom, but I know you can do it. Just follow these step-by-step -step instructions and you will be right on top of this project. So I hope you enjoy this project today. And if you do, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ding that bell for notifications so that you can get future So Very Crafty videos as they come out, when they come out. And if you want more sewing and crafting tutorials, head over to www.SoVeryCrafty.com for dozens and dozens and dozens of more sewing and crafting tutorials that you don't see here. So I hope you enjoy this project today. Let's get started on how to make this adorable little bunny Easter basket for your child this Easter. Okay, so how do we get started on making this adorable little Easter basket for your kids this Easter? Well, I started out by using some paper and this paper is actually doctor's office um, paper that they put on the uh, seats that you sit on in doctor's offices. And I think they, this works fantastic for pattern making. So what I did was I got some of this paper out and I used a bowl. And I just traced a serving bowl all the way around on my piece of paper. And that, that was it. The next thing I did was I traced <clears throat> the seam allowance and in this instance, I used a one quarter inch seam allowance. I used a compass in order to do that. Now, I have an extra large compass, as you can see, and I just found the middle, determined my seam allowance, and went all the way around with a pencil so that I had a nice even seam allowance. If you have a smaller compass, you can just put your compass on the edge and draw all the way around your seam allowance, making sure that it's one quarter inch. It's not very difficult at all. The next thing that you are going to do is you are going to cut out um, an outer piece, a lining piece, and a piece of Pelon 808 or 809 interfacing. Now 808 and 809 are exactly the same thing. It's just 808 is a single fold and 809 is a double fold, so you get more out of it um, and it's a little more expensive. So either 808 or 809 will work for this project. You are going to get a pattern piece that will be placed in the description section of the video where it says see more. Um, of this ear and that's what it is it's a bunny ear and you're going to cut two outer pieces two lining pieces and two interfacing pieces for your ear and I will show you how to put those on in a later step 
you're going to cut four inch wide by 20 inch long piece of fabric and interfacing for your handle of your basket. And finally, you are going to cut a seven and a half inch a wide piece of fabric for the body of your basket. Now the length of your body piece of your fabric is going to depend on the circumference of the circle that you're using for the base of your basket. Now in my instance what I did was I took my tape measure and I set it on the seam allowance line and I measured all the way around and it came to 28 inches all the way around and again I measured on the seam allowance because that's where it's going to be sewn I added to that seam allowance another half inch because I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance and when I stitch my body pieces together I will be using a quarter inch seam allowance on that and it will take up a quarter inch on each side of my project so that equals a half inch so I added to my project um, a half inch to my 28 inch measurement. And so for the body of your project, you are going to stitch, or you're going to cut an outer piece, a lining piece, and an interfacing piece. Now once you have done that, you are going to go to the iron and you are going to fuse your interfacing following the manufacturer's instructions. So I'm going to head over to the iron right now and I'm just going to fuse these interfacing pieces to the wrong side of each of my outer fabric pieces and not the lining. So I will do that and I will come right back. Okay, now I'm back and I have fused my interfacing on the back of all of my outer pieces. Now it's time for me to create my outer basket. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch my short ends of my main basket piece using a quarter inch seam allowance just right across the edge here. I'm not going to show that on the video because there's no reason. Just a quarter inch seam allowance right across the edge. And then we'll come back and we'll go on to our next step. Now I'm back and as you can see I have stitched my short ends together. And now the most difficult part of this project um, comes up next. I am going to place this round tube onto the bottom of my bottom here right sides together and I'm going to use quite a few pins to do this but the best way to make sure that this is correct is you are going to fold this in half and I'm just going to clip a little notch here on the end. It'll be within the seam allowance so you'll not see it. And I'll do that on both ends. Then I'm going to fold it in half again, matching these notches so that I can line up these other ends and I'm just going to clip a notch here on the end on each side and what that does is that will 
tell me where the centers of each of my circle, center parts of my circle are. And I'm going to do the same thing for my round bottom. I'm just going to fold it in half. Take a little notch. Take another little notch. Fold it in half again, matching those notches so we know they're center. And clip off our other notches. Now we are going to place these right sides together matching up these notches. And I'm going to start with the seam here because we know that that's the center. And I am going to pin Uh, for those of you that follow So Very Crafty, you know that I like to use Wonder Clips for a lot of my projects. But for this, pins are really the way to go. And keep in mind that this interfacing is quite thick um, because we want this to have some body. Now we're going to line up the rest of our notches and pin them. And this is the way that we are going to be able to get our bottom piece all lined up with our main body piece. Otherwise, it never comes out right. You end up struggling trying to get them to match. But this way, they match perfectly. And once you have the four notched pieces together, you can start filling in the spots in between the notches so that they are also pinned right sides together. Now I should tell you that I have used some decorator weight fabric for my outer bag, but you could use quilting cotton if you like, but I like the sturdiness of this fabric for my outer bag since there's going to be some heavy things inside. I thought that would work a little bit better than the quilting cotton, but the interfacing is thick enough and heavy enough that it should hold just about what you need. Now you can see I've used quite a few pins. Um, I, I could use some more, but um, we're just going to use these for now. And we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch this together using a one quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, um, just the way that we had designed it to begin with. So um, let's head over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how that's done. Here we are at the sewing machine and I have my basket with my pins all in it and I'm just going to scrunch down the sides and make sure that my 
presser foot is lined up and I'm going to stitch all the way around this circle just following the circle edge um, and take this slowly if you're not used to, to stitching uh, curves and corners because um, you could end up stitching all over the place. Now there we have it. We stitched it nice and neatly all the way around the bottom of our basket. So let's head over to our workstation and move on to the next step. Now here we are back at the workstation and we are going to turn our outer basket right sides out. there you can see it sits nice and flat on our work surface. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to create our ears. We are just going to set our basket aside for a second. We're going to take our outer ear pieces and our lining ear pieces and we're going to place them right sides together. We are going to head over to the sewing machine and we are just going to stitch them along the sides, the point, and the other side. And we're going to leave the bottom open because we're going to turn these right sides out. So let's head over to the sewing machine and let's take care of that. So here we are back at the sewing machine and we are going to stitch our ears using a one quarter inch seam allowance. Once we get to the point, we are gonna stop with our needle down lift up our presser foot, and start down the other side. And we're gonna repeat this process for the other ear as well. we have two ears that are sewn right sides together. Now we're back at the workstation and I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to clip off the top of this point making sure not to cut through the stitching otherwise we'll have a hole in our ear and we don't really want that. Now I'm going to turn these right sides out and again, this interfacing is stiff, and I wanted it to be stiff because I want my ears to stand up from my basket instead of hanging down from them. So I chose this interfacing for a reason. 
Um, normally, I prefer not to work with this particular interfacing because it's difficult um, at times to work with. So I'm just going to take my little poking tool and I'm going to poke out my tip of my ear. I'm going to head over to the iron real quick and I'm just going to press these nice and neat. Now I've pressed my ears as you can see. Now it's time to add them to our basket. And I'm going to take my basket and I'm just going to fold it in half just a little bit so I know where my center is. I'm just going to place a pin right here in the center front of my basket. I'm going to take my ears and I'm going to place them this way. But before I do that, I want to fold the bottom of my ears to the center so that we have what looks like an ear as opposed to just a flat triangle. And I'm going to pin my ears. Actually, I think I'm going to take some wonder clips and I'm just going to clip this ear and I'm going to do the same to the other. So that we have a nice bunny ear for our project. I'm going to run over to the sewing machine real quick and I'm just going to stitch these ears using a 1 8 inch seam allowance just to secure them while we move on to our next steps. Now my bunny ears are on my basket just the way I want them. Now it's time for us to work on our handle. And we're going to take our 20 inch handle and we're going to fold it in half lengthwise. And we can just finger press this um, to create a crease in the middle. Or you can head over to the iron and do that. But for now I'm just going to crease this using my fingers. We're then going to take the outer edges and put them in that uh, right next to that crease that we just created. And we're going to do that on both sides so that our raw edges are now facing towards the center. Once we've done that, we are going to fold this in half and we're going to create a handle enclosing those raw edges. And I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch on both sides of this handle lengthwise to enclose those raw edges and to have a nice finished look on my handle. And then we're going to install our handles uh, when I come back. Okay, now we are back and I've stitched up both sides of my strap and now it's time to add it to our basket. I'm going to fold this in half again. I've left my pin in the center and I'm just going to find the outer centers of my basket and I'm going to finger press them. I'm going to place one side of my handle on the center mark here and the other side of my handle to the center mark here. Just like that. And I'm going to stitch uh, this handle, I'm going to stitch this handle right here in place using a 1 8 inch seam allowance 
just to keep it there until we finish our project. Now I've got my handle on and my ears on. I'm going to take this pin out. And the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to create another basket with our lining exactly the same way that we created our outer basket, but without the ears and the handle. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have completed a li our lining, but I should note that when I stitched the side of our bag, I've left an opening here so that we can turn this bag right sides out. So whenever you're, when you stitch your main outer fabric, instead of stitching all the way down, just stitch a partial way on the bottom and a partial way on the top and leave an opening here so that we can turn it. Now we're going to finish up this project. We are going to take our outer bag and we are going to place it inside of our lining bag. And you'll note that our lining bag is wrong sides out and our outer bag is right sides out. So when we put them together, they will be right sides together. And I'm going to line up the seams so that everything looks nice when we're done. I'm going to take my wonder clips here and I'm just going to clip all the way around the top so that the raw edges of the lining fabric and the raw edges of my outer fabric match. And we want to make sure that our ears and our strap are sandwiched in between the layers. So this ear needs to go inside there. Otherwise, it will not be what we want. And that goes for the strap as well. Now you can see that that goes together nicely with our wonder clips. So we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're just going to stitch all the way around the top here and then our bag will be just about finished. Here we are back at the sewing machine and I've taken off my sewing table and I just have my free arm. I'm going to take my basket and I'm going to place it in between my free arm here and my needle. And I'm going to stitch all the way around the top using a one quarter inch seam allowance. Now we've finished stitching our bag together. So let's head back over to the workstation and let's finish this up. And it's time for us to turn this right sides out. We are just going to reach in where our opening is in the lining and we're going to pull this outer bag through the lining so that it will all be right sides out where it needs to be.
Now it's time to close our opening and we have a choice here. We can close our opening using ladder stitch or we can just use our machine. I'm just going to use my machine today. And once we've done that, we're going to push this lining back into the bag. You can see our handle is where it needs to be. Okay, now my video stopped, so um, I have been over to the sewing machine and I have stitched my basket, top stitched all the way around the lining, and now I have my ears sticking up, my handle where it needs to be, and our bunny basket is all finished. How cute is that? I got some nice uh, fabrics that I had in my stash. Thank God I cleaned out my stash a while ago and I actually realized that I had this fabric because my stash was a mess. But this little Easter basket, bunny basket, is all finished for Easter this year. Put your treats, put your gifts, put whatever you want into this little basket, and it is ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed this project today, and if you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ding that bell for notifications. And if you want more sewing and crafting tutorials, head over to www.soverycrafty.com for loads and loads more sewing and crafting tutorials that you don't see here on the YouTube channel. And while you're there, you can check out the blog post that goes with this particular project if you like to learn by looking at pictures instead of the video. So please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and try out this terrific little bunny basket for Easter this year for your child. It's a fun one and super simple for any beginner sewist as usual here on So Very Crafty. So thanks again and I will see you all next time.